Prince Charles officially became king as soon as his mother passed away. He would have been addressed as Your Majesty the King the moment that she stopped being Your Majesty. It's a seamless transition. And in fact, the royal standard, which would have represented the Queen, will now represent the King. And that's why the royal standard doesn't go to half-mast. It stays up in recognition of the fact that there is continuity of monarchy. When Charles becomes king, Camilla, his wife, will become the queen consort. There'll also be changes in the titles of other members of the royal family. Prince William will become the Duke of Cornwall and in time will be invested as the Prince of Wales. There's also precedent for changes to the titles of the grandchildren. That's the children of William and Kate, Harry and Meghan, Eugenie and Beatrice. Currently, not all of them have the title of prince or princess, but it may be in Charles's gift to change that. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Charles's first official duty is to address his new nation and he'll do that in a televised address. And then the following day, he'll bring together his Ascension Council made up of privy councillors, his advisers, and they will gather and they will formally ratify his position as king. And at the end of that, the heralds will go up onto the roof of St. James's Palace, a wonderful medieval palace in London, in their full regalia with their trumpets, and they will proclaim the new king. Over the coming days, the new king will travel to various areas of his realm to meet his new subjects. He'll meet the political leaders in the devolved governments, He'll also meet uh, religious leaders and hold services of thanksgiving at various cathedrals, but he'll also meet the people, the people that he is now going to be serving as king. The circumstances in which Charles has found out that he's become king are very different to those when his mother Elizabeth found out that she was taking the throne. She was much younger, when her father, King George VI, died in 1952 in Sandringham, the royal estate in Norfolk. At the time, she was in Kenya, so it took a while for the news to get to her, and then she was delayed coming back to the UK because of a thunderstorm. Charles is in his 70s. He's already the oldest heir to the throne in the UK, and he has had decades to prepare for this moment. The other senior members of the royal family will be intimately involved in events between the Queen's death and her funeral. As was the case with Prince Philip and other royals before him, close family members will accompany the coffin on foot as it makes its final journeys. Her children will attend the lying in state and stand vigil around their mother's coffin. Traditionally, the coronation of the new monarch takes place at least six months after the passing of the old one. This is to allow for an appropriate period of mourning. So we expect the coronation of King Charles to take place within the next year. <laughs>